All right. right, come join Kyle, John and David as they go through what's on the playlist. Find out what everyone's favourite at Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment. We have a few segments to be honest. In and out points, no celebs and the gossip. Back in time where we talk about the big M's coming attractions, what the Q quick checks. Who'll be laughing? You abundantly. Welcome to Jewel Redundancy. Yes, welcome to Jewel Redundancy, the only podcast we hear all the latest in television, entertainment news, and two meals with exactly the same Emmy predictions. I'm one of those hosts, David Allen, and another one is... Yeah, I'm broken. A third one is... Kyle Bridger. I would say that I'm the Oscars to John's Tony's because he's working the magic behind the scenes. And Dave can be our Emmys man. Okay, I'm the Emmys. The the Television Academy gives me the awards. I could have given you the... uh, What is it? The, The... the, the quibbies or the, oh, wow. the no the what is what is it the the, the, the golden raspberry thing the golden yeah, raspberry the razzies, razzies. yeah the no, razzies, no. right no I, I could have been that you mentioning a lot of award shows that's this month that's all we got this month it's it's like this armageddon like uh this two worlds colliding we got the emmys you know later this month we're predicting them tonight we have the golden globes this weekend we have the Oscar nominations, the BAFTA nominations, all that stuff coming later this month. There's so much going on awards-wise. Boy, it's it's going to be a very busy month. We're going to take them one at a time. And tonight, yes, we're focusing on the Emmys. This is our 13th uh, annual Emmy prediction special. Lucky 13. And it's very fitting for this 75th Primetime Emmy Awards because these were the Emmys that were supposed to take place. In September, but they're taking place now in January, January 15th, 2024 on Fox, hosted by Anthony Anderson. We are live on Twitch. We are live on YouTube tonight. The chat is open on both. So be sure to send in your thoughts. Oh, we got a lot going on. John is directing the show. We're going to have some visuals. We're going to have some audio cues. A lot going on tonight. Uh, Kyle, are you ready to to talk about Emmys? I think uh, as ready as I'll ever be. (laughs) Or I could be like the Emmys and say no, and we have to postpone for the next month. I don't think we should postpone again because. <laughs> so let's let's. I'm going to break down the timeline of it all because it is very confusing. So, the nominations for these Emmys were announced back on July 12th. We reacted to those Emmys in episode 427. Now, these are for shows that aired between June 1st, 2022, and May 31st, 2023. The initial ceremony was, again, supposed to take place on September 18th. So in other words, the latest these shows could have aired were over 217 days ago. Oh, my God. The earliest, 581 days ago. (laughs) That's one and a half years ago some of these shows aired. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? And Well, it's like the Grammys. The Grammys are like the weirdest. Grammys never make sense. Yeah. It never makes sense with their timeline of when things are eligible. Well, this is this is definitely true here tonight. The Bear, which aired season two this past June, is not nominated for these Emmys. It's nominated for season one, which aired mm-hmm. in June of 2022. Yeah. However, the Golden Globes that are this weekend, season two for the Golden Globes. Uh, yeah. Other other old shows, you know, Wednesday is nominated here tonight from November of 2022 and or September of 2022. Mm-hmm. Better Call Saul's second half of the final season, which concluded in August of 2022. And then finally, Obi-Wan Kenobi, <laughs> which actually started in May of 2022. Two Memorial Days. Ago, like, <laughs> yeah, that's wild. Like. I really follow this stuff and I'm confused. <laughs> and to be honest, I'm a little bit over it. <laughs> I was like, do we even, should we even do this? I mean, yeah, show? Like, I, I barely remember yeah. these yeah. shows, you know, how they compare to each other. I'm ready for the next cycle. I'm, I'm ready to talk Golden Globes. I'm ready to talk about mm-hmm. Fargo, which will be, I guess, this September's Emmys. Like, it's yeah. just, oh my God. It's a, yeah, it's a mess. It's and a voting, mess. voting was done. Forever ago, too. Voting was done, and that's going to make things very tricky tonight. 
because we are in this mindset of like maybe like what's popular right now mm, like what yeah. has the buzz now that doesn't mean anything because the voting was back in like july and august yep so like what was happening then in the world and then there was two strikes happening so none of the writers and actors were able to promote and do the fyc events during yeah. that time so it's this is a very odd emmys race already so uh, wow i there's a there's a lot to break down we're gonna try to predict it the best we can tonight but uh, I don't know. Maybe Bard would would have better predictions. <laughs> Maybe we should have just stuck with those when we Wait, came back. Wait, do we September. have Bard on the? Do we have Bard on the pod? Bard is here tonight to read the nominees. Wow. But unfortunately, no predictions from Bard. Bard did all of its predictions back in all September. Right. You can but, listen to that show. But tonight, but Bard is always on. with us. He's always oh, around. Always listening. He's always, always listening. listening. Yeah. Always listening. But yeah, so I want to I want to just set the stage real quick with some some stats and then we'll get into our predictions. You know, uh, just like the previous Emmys back in whatever year that was at this point, Succession leads the pack with 27 nominations, followed by The Last of Us with 24, The White Lotus with 23 and Ted Lasso with 21. If you look at just the major nominations, the ones that we're going to see in the primetime broadcast for these shows, it's still Succession leading with 14 followed by the White Lotus with 12, and then the limited series Beef with nine. Mm. So again, you know, Succession, of course, is leading. The White Lotus are leading. Both are in the drama category, so both are going to be up against each other. Uh, it's a very competitive race uh, between those two. I mean, HBO, I mean, to have the the the, the top three shows, The Last yeah. of Us, The White Lotus, Succession, all this stuff here. Of course, you know, it's always this race between Netflix and HBO. And last Emmys, it was a huge win for HBO. You know, they got they had 140 nominations to Netflix's 105 last year. This year, despite the dominance of those HBO shows, it's actually only 127 for Warner Brothers Discovery there, HBO Max, Max, whatever. This graphic's so old. I know. From the Emmys, <laughs> you know, back in July, it's like they rebranded already. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That. But um, however, uh, Netflix slipped to 103 nominations and again if we look at just the major noms we have hbo proper with 40 netflix with 25 and then apple tv plus with 17 so hbo is still leading in nominations overall it makes sense but both overall hbo and netflix are down compared to previous years which i find very surprising for hbo just with the amount of shows that they have in these categories and you know just across the board leading the races but Ah, all right. So let's 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 do some predictions tonight. There's there's no bet tonight. This is more casual. You know, we're starting on. We don't want to start the year off with any animosity. Um, uh, just sharing some will wins and dark horses. Um, just Kyle and I again. No Bard. Uh, Bard is just going to be reading off the nominees tonight. But if you want, you can listen to that show back in September where Bard does the uh their predictions. Well, let's start off with the limited and or anthology series category bard can you give us the nominees and the nominees for outstanding supporting actor in a limited or anthology series or movie are murray bartlett welcome to chippendales paul walter hauser blackbird richard jenkins Dahmer, monster the jeffrey Dahmer story joseph lee beef ray liotta blackbird young mazino beef jesse plemons love and death all right i before we got on the podcast, Kyle was telling me he got his will wins down for the limited categories here, but he didn't have his dark horses. And I feel like for a couple of these, I think there's some will wins that are pretty sure are locked up. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's like on the dark horses. Do they really matter? I'll be, I'd be surprised uh, to hear if you have something different from my supporting actor will win here. I'm going with Paul Walter Hauser from Blackbird for the will win. And then, this is for a dark horse. I'm thinking someone from Beef, and I went with Young Menzino. Didn't watch Beef, don't know much about it. But again, I just think Paul Walter Hauser has this. I mean, speaking of shows from forever ago, Blackbird, July of 2022. But, you know, every award that Paul Walter Hauser was up for back in a year ago, back in January of last year, Critics' Choice, Golden Globes, he won for this role. He was nominated for the SAG Award too. The only thing... Maybe going against that show is it's it's been so long, 
like okay does, is it uh is it beef's turn you know it's been so long you know maybe it's like oh beef is more fresher in the mind it's got to the uh, i don't know uh, what do you think Um, well, I think, uh, th those of that I've heard that have watched Blackbird love it. Mm, yeah. Um, and I haven't tuned in yet, but I want to, um, my will win is going to be Paul Walter Hauser as well. Mm. Um, so that is my will win. And, um, my dark horse, I told you I was going to go on the fly. And once they mm. brought up the. supporting actors i thought of young manzino too from beef mm -hmm. um but because i thought the other guy from beef wasn't as strong as this guy and i and i like your thinking going with beef beef is popular it's got a bunch of uh nominations so i could see it maybe going that way or do they go with a more established name like Jesse Plemons or Richard Jenkins, something in there. But um, uh, I, I like your thinking. I like where it's at. Murray Bartlett's one before, right? So you went for White Lotus. So, I mean, to me, this was a really a shot in the dark uh, category. I wasn't really sure what to do with it. I just um, saw Paul Walter Hauser's name on a bunch of lists. And I was like, hey, that sounds like uh, the guy for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, could it be the Ray Liotta, you know, the late great Ray Liotta? Um, yeah. maybe. Um, but I just think I, I think it's still gonna be Paul Walter Hauser. Mm. You know, beef the only thing again. We're gonna talk a, a bit tonight because there's a lot of love shared in categories of like the same show, and it's like we got two from beef. Are they gonna split each other a bit? Mm. Sometimes that happens, sometimes you know it it just helps. Like it it's like it's this it you can never really fully tell. But I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, I think it's going to be Paul Walter Hauser. Yeah. I What's think... crazy about Paul Walter Hauser is I'm pretty sure he's like a comedian. And this is a much darker role, isn't it? I mean, he, yeah. I mean, he is playing, I believe, a, a serial killer. Or Yeah. Least, so, yeah. So it's just he's a great character actor because he does a great yeah. job in the, the latest season of The After Party, too. Oh, I, I haven't seen that. But I know. I mean, he was a very comedic uh, role in I, Tanya. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He had a, um, you know, he's done some dramatic work, obviously, in Black Klansman, um, Richard Jewell. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think he's in Cobra Kai. Like, yeah, he's he, yeah. He, he definitely works. He definitely works. Um, all right, let's move into supporting actress. And the nominees for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Limited or Anthology Series or Movie are Annalie Ashford, Welcome to Chippendales, Maria Bello, Beef. Claire Danes, Fleischman is in trouble. Juliette Lewis, welcome to Chippendales. Camilla Marone, Daisy Jones and the Six. Nisi Nash Betts, Dahmer, Monster, The Jeffrey Dahmer Story. Merritt Weaver, Tiny Beautiful Things. All right. Oh, God, why, why don't you tell me your will win in Dark Horse first? Here? So my will win here is going to be Nisi Nash. Okay. And I'm going Dark Horse on the fly. I have really no idea here, uh, but I'm going to go with Annalie Ashford. That sounds good to me. Um, Top on the list. <laughs> I just don't think Maria. Yeah, I don't think Maria Bello. Uh, I, I mean, it's a fine performance. Uh, I don't really know uh, much about Daisy Jones and the Six, but I do know it's a popular show for Amazon. Um, uh, so we're just going to go with Annalie Ashford. I like her and other stuff. Why not this one? is my Sound dark good. horse but Nisi nash is my will win uh pretty much because it's the only show i think i've watched <laughs> on oh besides beef but that's you why watch how fleshman is in trouble no i did not oh, all right. i actually like that show it's a nice yeah. surprise um it's been so long ago i couldn't tell you much about it but um <laughs> i do remember claire danes uh being a, a scene stealer and, and and that's the reason why i put her as my dark horse but yeah uh -huh. my my will win is nisi nash best um it's just i think for like Dahmer or Dahmer monster the jeffrey Dahmer story um <laughs> it's everyone talks about it's evan peters and nisi nash best yeah we're, we're the people that like people talk about most when they're talking yeah. about Dahmer. nisi won the critics choice award for this She was nominated for the SAG and Golden Globe 
she did lose, but it's very interesting of who she lost to because it's, again, not people in this category. She lost the SAG Award to Jessica Chastain. We'll talk about her maybe a little bit later. And then she lost the Golden Globe to Jennifer Coolidge, who was up for The White Lotus season two. Mm. And yes, while White Lotus is a drama here, it was a limited series at the Globes for season two. Last year, it's very confusing. Yeah. But yeah, so I, I'm going with Niecy Nash there. And then, yeah, Claire Danes is my dark horse. She's an Emmy favorite. Three pass wins, many noms. She's She has a show-stealing episode, which I pulled the screen uh, shot here from from a retreat she goes on in, in one point during the season. Uh, so those are my picks. I just think you look at the rest of the category. I'm not sure about Chippendales at all. I feel like it was forgotten about when it mm -hmm. even came out and that these awards mm -hmm. were like, oh, wow, that's a nice surprise for Chippendales. Yeah. Maybe again. July and August is when they were voting. I don't think anyone's thinking about it now. Uh, so it's just like you, you cross off one or two of those and you, you get you, this way you get. But. All right, let's let's go into uh, the lead acting races. We're going to start off with lead actor for a limited series. The nominees for outstanding lead actor in a limited or anthology series or movie are Heron Edgerton, Blackbird, Kumail Nanjiani, Welcome to Chippendales, Evan Peters, Dahmer, Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, Daniel Radcliffe, Weird, The Al Yankovic story, Michael Shannon, George and Tammy, and Stephen Yun, Beef. All right. This one, I think, of the four is the toughest one. Mm. The, the limited acting race, I, I believe here. I wonder if you agree with me, Kyle. I have, I think I have the same two people that you're going to pick. I just don't know if I have them in that order. Mm. My will win I'm going with is Stephen Yun from Beef. And my dark horse is the monster himself, Dahmer Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer Stories actor, Evan Peters. It's one of those things where this could flop. It just was how I was feeling that day. Uh, Peters won the Golden Globe, Critics' Choice for Dahmer. But he's yet to face Stephen Yun. And there's no other stats for Stephen Yun because this is the first like awards <laughs> thing for Beef, really. And... You know, maybe Beef is a bit fresher. You know, Stephen Young is a well-respected critics actor. Uh, both, you know, deliver great performances. So I think it's between those two. I just don't know if I have it in the right uh, order. But what do you think, Kyle? I have the same exact thing. Okay. Uh, with your description of um, Evan Peters, I really thought you were going to do him as your will win. But uh, I have Stephen Young as my will win and Evan Peters as my dark horse. I do think it's between those two guys. Um, I really think it could be a toss up. Uh, I think I really like Steven Young's performance in, um, in beef. Uh, so I think he's well worth it. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. These two up against each other, what's going to happen. Um, I think, I think beef's got enough staying power. It was yeah. very popular around the time when voting was happening. So yeah. I think it, uh, it could be his. Yeah, I think, yeah, it was definitely more fresher and, you know, hard in any kind of pun. I mean, I think Beef is a more, like, easily digestible show than Dahmer oh, is. Oh, boy, you did it. You huh? know, it's it's just like, while it, they're both dark and they're both angry, it's like, I feel like Beef is more fun <laughs> than Dahmer is. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, you, you feel gross after watching Dahmer. It's a, you know... Yeah. Evan Peters is delivering one hell of a performance, but it's just like you feel ugh, ugh, after it. And at least, you know, Stephen Young, I think everyone likes him um, as, as an actor and what he delivers in Beef. So, yeah, I think uh, Beef was the only show that I actually binged the entire oh. um, the entire year. You don't want to fill up too much on Beef, Kyle. It's, yeah, you know, yeah. Got to get some other veggies <laughs> yeah. in there and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here, let's, we've got one more acting race in the limited category. What do we got? And the nominees for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Limited or Anthology Series or Movie are Annalie Ashford, Welcome to Chippendales, Maria Bello, Beef, oh. Claire Danes, mm. Fleischman is in Trouble, Bart. Juliette Lewis, <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Chippendales, what? Wait, what? Camilla Marone, Daisy Jones. Uh-oh, uh -oh, Bard. Is that the wrong one, or? I don't know, we got lead, is there a lead one in there, Bard? Uh oh, I know what I did. That's my fault. Okay, here we oh, go. Human the error. nominees for outstanding lead <laughs> actress in a limited or anthology human. series or movie are Lizzie Kaplan, Fleischman is in trouble, Jessica Chastain, George and Tammy, Dominique Fishback, Swarm, Catherine Hahn, 
Tiny Beautiful Things, Riley Kyo, Daisy Jones and the Six, and Ali Wong, Beef. I have too many windows open and I forgot to close one because there is one behind the other one. Sorry. I long for the day that we can just have Bard do the podcast full time instead of John. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. Just kidding, John. All right, Kyle, what do you have uh, for this category? So, um, my dark horse, and I've got an honorable mention in this category too, but my dark horse is um, Jessica Chastain. And my will win is Ali Wong. Uh, I was really impressed with Ali Wong's acting in uh, in Beef. I was just taken away. I th- I thought she was really really good. I was very surprised by what I was seeing, um, and I think her and Stephen Yun worked well um, with what they were doing. Uh, Jessica Chastain. I'm going to be honest. I didn't see. Uh, was it George and Tammy? George and Tammy. Yeah, George and Tammy. Not Tammy Faye. Not the yeah. Oscar winning Tammy Faye. The yeah. other Tammy. Yeah. Um, I've, I mean, I've heard good things about it. Uh, I think they love Jessica Chastain, so why not? It's possible. Um, my, but I really do think it's Ali Wong's to lose in this category. I would say my, um, my honorable mention, even though I absolutely Ooh. could not stand I know where you're the going. character, I know where you're going. she made me hate this person so well. I, I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, Dominique Fishback. In Swarm. I couldn't make it through the series, but it, she did such a good job yeah. with that character. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely agree. Co sign that. It was hard uh, with that character, but that's more of the character and not the actor uh-huh. there. Um, I'll say my Will Win and Dark Horse is yours, but reversed. Uh, I have a Will Win of Ali Wong, Dark Horse, Jessica Chastain. So we're on the same page. I just went with Ali because, you know, not too many awards to go off of yet. Um, but like, I just feel like the show beef is such like a two hander. Uh, Wait, did I, you have Ali Wong as your dark horse or no? My will win is Ali Wong. Yeah, I have the same thing, man. Oh, you did? I thought. Yeah, I just said Jessica Chastain first as a dark. Oh, horse. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, right. I tricked you. We're, we're, I'm losing it here. I, was, <laughs> I derailed the get, whole show. <laughs> let's just have the, let's just have Bard just do all three parts again. Remember, we had that one episode where we just had them like make <laughs> yeah, yeah podcast for us. Let's just do that. All right. Yeah. So we match. But yeah, I think Ali Wong, it, the beef is, is such is a two hander. It's it's the two of them. It's it's just more. I also think more popular More people saw it on Netflix than George and Tammy on Showtime. I don't like just like people watching. I think more people have seen beef than George and Tammy. It's just that will help uh, with the voting. Um, but then, you know, for my Dark Horse pick of Jessica Chastain, it's like like I mentioned, she won the SAG Award. Uh, earlier you know um but she's an awards favorite and you like to sometimes bet on movie stars when it comes to the emmys not always but it's good to use as like a dark horse bet um if you look at like the past winners in this category uh you know for lead actress michelle williams regina king kate winslet uh and look at like the the male winners mark ruffalo ewan mcgregor michael keaton it's like they're movie stars you know so it's just like I think it's a safe bet when you get into this limited in anthology series category that you go with the movie star there. But all right, so we're we're matching quite a bit here tonight. I, I'm yeah. I, I I have a feeling we'll match at least for our will win on limited series. I bet we'll have the dark horse the same too. But what do we got, Bard? The nominees for outstanding limited or anthology series are Beef, Dahmer, Monster, The Jeffrey Dahmer Story, Daisy Jones and the Six. Fleischman is in trouble, and Obi Wan Kenobi. All right, here I have a will win of what we've been talking about all night, beef, and like we've been also saying all night, it's these two shows: the Dark Horse is Dahmer, Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. Uh, Kyle, we match. Uh, my Dark Horse is Obi Wan. No, I'm joking. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I have the same same setup as well i mean uh i just think beef has the is more popular i think the the acting is a little bit better um like i said it's very catchy um i binge right through it dahmer's a little bit if you can't binge dahmer you can't dahmer is definitely heavier and i still remember the think pieces that were like 
dumb or so hot and then everyone's like should we be thinking this serial killer like it's such a weird thing that it did for that guy i don't know it's just yeah. so interesting but i remember even a little bit of uh there was getting some joe parison comparisons evan peters yeah. if he wins an emmy he better you know thank joe para yeah uh, because there's a lot of similarities in the uh <laughs> the, the delivery <laughs> yeah uh, yeah I, I it's what we've been saying all night so i won't repeat myself it's just beef is just it was what you know and both were on netflix and i think that's that's huge here and you're seeing a pattern like when shows are popular and people have been able to see him in this age of peak tv it's a better shot than a show that maybe it's like wait what's this where was it on it was on yeah uh red box plus chicken soup for the soul where yeah. do i have that is that on crackle like it's it's very hard to find. So it's like these shows were popular. Beef was a little bit, you know, fresher, maybe more bingeable uh, acting performances, more maybe more, more well-rounded. So I think that's the reason for the will win for beef there. Yeah. All right. Let's move now to drama series. I just have to say, yes. I've never been happier to be done with the category than that category. Yeah. It's just the worst category this year. <laughs> Yeah, the, usually it's it, it's some of the it's better a strong. categories. Yeah, like this year it was kind of weak. Stunk. It was dunk, kind of weak. Um, yeah, you can't say that about the drama. Drama is no. stacked this year. Even with just two of the shows, the two shows that we have in this supporting drama acting category, and the nominees are the nominees for outstanding supporting actor in a drama series are F. Murray Abraham, The White Lotus; Nicholas Braun, Succession; Michael Imperioli, The White Lotus. Theo James, The White Lotus, Matthew McFadden, Succession, Alan Ruck, Succession, Will Sharp, The White Lotus, and Alexander Skarsgård, Succession. All right. So I'll tell you right now, I think I'll, I'll do a, a big bet here. Someone either from Succession or White Lotus is going oh, to win wow. this Emmy. <laughs> going out on a limb for sure. Um, that's my guess. Yeah. Uh, I don't have much to back it up on, but that's my guess. Kyle... Who's it going to be, though? I'll let you go first here. Will win Dark Horse. What do we got? So uh, I'm going to go Dark Horse first. Okay. Make um, it clear for me. I think there's a couple in this category. I We discussed it before that I don't think should be involved. I, I, I just think their roles were too small. Nicholas Braun, Michael Imperioli, F. Murray Abraham. I think we can get rid of those guys, right? Um, of I'm going to go one of each. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. My dark okay. horse is I thought he did the most with his character. Uh I'm gonna go with Will Sharp. Okay. From the White Lotus. Uh yeah. Just some of the stuff that he dealt with in the in the show. I think uh he did a good job with it. Now, I'm not really caring about the dark horse because I think the person that's I have as my will win is going to win. And they should win because between him and another character that we'll talk about, surely, um, I, I played off each other so well. Uh, it may, it was a huge storyline in the show. And they, he, this guy is so good. I just can't even tell you. This guy is such a good actor. Um, I'm going to go with my will win Matthew McFadden from uh, Succession. Ding, ding, ding. That is my will win as well. I will say for the Dark Horse, again, didn't really matter. And that's why I just like, I don't know, Alexander Skarsgård. Like, I picked Succession. Mm -hmm. I went all in on Succession. I liked uh -huh. the reasoning behind uh, Will Sharp that you said for the White Lotus. I think of this category, if you're picking someone from the White Lotus, of those like four guys that are in this category, yes, Will Sharp is the the pick. Um, but it's Matthew McFadden. I mean, it that scene that you mentioned with him and Sarah Snook, uh, you know, Tom and Shiv. Yeah. Uh, just what he delivers this season, every season, he's so good as this role of Tom. I am, and 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 you know, normally it's like, oh, do I worry about a vote split? You know, we got something. It doesn't matter here because there's like four from each show. Mm. Like, there's it, if it's gonna split, it's gonna split. Like, what can you do? It's there's two yeah. shows to to go through here, but. You know, last year we actually had McFadden as our dark horse. We had Kieran Culkin as our will win. I looked it mm. up from last year. Uh, uh, Matthew won uh, for this role, and I think he's going to repeat again. Yeah. He just had more, even more to do in this yeah. season. Uh, you know, what? 
I was just thinking about it and what he does so well with the character is like he can go from being like a wounded puppy with Shiv yep. to like a bully with Nicholas Braun's character yep. to like just a uh just like a eager dog with um uh shoot the head guy there I'm just totally drawing a blank um, um we got uh the scottish guy Br- scottish guy scottish guy we mcdonald's got... i'm love i'm loving it he does the mcdonald's <laughs> brian cox brian cox yeah yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> like, i went deep cut for the most obvious thing i went deep cut <laughs> i couldn't i was drawing really such scottish? a blank dude yeah so um i what this it's just he has such a well-rounded character i believe every everything that he comes up with he's so good He's just good. Yeah. You got to watch him to believe him. Yeah. And we, we've been talking about White Lotus. We've talked about Succession. It's it, it, That is like this year. That's this category. I think just overall, you know, not to spoil the rest of my night, it's going to be a big night for Succession. Um, but And I think, for, unfortunately, for the White Lotus, they're going to be like left behind, mm. just like at, you know, at the airport in Sicily. It's just going to be... Mm. It's like I'm not even sure if the White Lotus should be actually in here in drama. Yeah. They they were yeah. forced to get out of the limited category that they won, you know, for season one mm. because of it. It's very confusing because like I'm thinking about it, Fargo season two, and I think future seasons of Fargo are still in the limited category. Yeah, even though in Fargo season two, it was the same character. It was played by a different actor, but it was the same. There was that carryover of. So it's like it's very confusing because like with this new location, new ensemble, it's just Jennifer Coolidge is is yeah. coming over. So it, it, it's it's very like ticky tack of like. And if you're going to ask me, OK, you can't be unlimited. I don't know. I think you should be actually being comedy. Like, I think it's a really good satire. Possibly, Yeah, it's definitely funnier than the bear. Like, yeah, well, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like. I don't know. I mean, Succession is also very funny, but I mean, at least I'll go more. It's mostly drama with some you know, funny moments, but I feel like White Lois, I feel like maybe it's like 60% satire comedy with like the 40% drama. I think it's mm-hmm. like right on that line. Yeah. Um, But here it is. And it's going to be, uh, you know, a fight between the two. And I think Succession is going to just come out on top. But yeah. All right. I think the, the one it could win, though, is their next category. Let's see. John Bard, where are the nominees? The nominees for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Drama Series are Jennifer Coolidge, The White Lotus, Elizabeth Debicki, The Crown, Megan Fahey, The White Lotus, Sabrina Impaxiator, The White Lotus, Aubrey Plaza, The White Lotus, Rhea Seahorn, Better Call Saul, J. Smith Cameron, Succession, and Simona Tabasco, The White Lotus. All right, I believe it's my turn to... Uh, rip off the band-aid and say who it is here i think the will win i'd be surprised if you don't have this one kyle but the will win i'm going with again I, it's just you know repeating uh jennifer coolidge the white lotus i think she's going to snag another trophy the dark horse is where it's a little interesting because i feel like i could easily say like megan fahey because it's like just with what you said uh about will sharp you know, if anyone is going to get it else in this category, especially from the White Lotus, it's probably it's probably her. Like the the scene she has with Will Sharp in that finale, just with mm-hmm. the look she gives, that's acting like that is it right yeah. there. But I can't not do this for her. This probably, I mean, this is the last time we'll see her for this role. It's this is a heart pick, the dark horse. I got to go with Ray Seahorn. I'm hoping. I don't think it's happening. I really don't. Unfortunately. But let me just do it. It's Jennifer Coolidge. Let me just let me just have the dark horse of Ray Seahorn. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Uh, Kyle, where are you going? Uh, I have the same exact setup, Jennifer Coolidge. Um, I honestly like I like Jennifer Coolidge, but I don't. She won last year, right? I don't think it's another repeat performance. I don't. I think this could go to somebody else, like. Ray Seahorn, uh, who's she, she honestly shouldn't even win for this season. She should have won for like two seasons ago for Better Call Saul. But I mean, we got to give her some love, maybe possibly. Yeah, I mean, here, here's the thing. Here's the reasoning, which it's not going to work for Ray Seahorn, unfortunately. 
if she hasn't gotten it yet, and for yeah. the most part, she's barely making it into this category. Yeah. 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 Like, that's an, an absurd already. But if she couldn't win for the first half of season six, the final season, when the, the second half was airing. So that was the perfect storm right there. It's like, okay, this thing is so fresh in people's minds. It's airing right now. I got to check the vote because waterworks, that's the episode for Ray Seahorn. You know, that moment where she's on the airport shuttle breaking down that was airing during the six, a voting and she didn't win that. So who's going to mm. remember a year later Yeah, when it comes to voting that yeah. performance, they didn't remember when it was actually happening. Yeah. That's my, that's my point there. And I think, just with Jennifer Coolidge, I mean, this second season, she was memed to death. You know, like, like her entire character, I mean, got the send off like that. Everyone was talking about the, the memes, the clips, the like season two was about her. Yeah. So if she got it for season one, she's getting it for season two. Yeah. She yeah. already won the Critics Choice Golden Globe, the SAG uh, for season two. She won the Emmy for season one. It's going to be her. But again, I'm going to put Ray as my dark horse. Um, and then if you look at like the rest of the category real quick, it's just like, I don't think, you know, you know, Sabrina from White Lotus not getting it. Jason Smith Cameron had like nothing to do yeah, with Jerry. Just this a season. very small role this season. Yeah. Simona also from the White Lotus not getting it. I mean, I guess if you're if I have to like do a quick ranking, not putting in Elizabeth Dubecki because I, I don't watch The Crown, it's like it's like you know, Coolidge. Uh, I guess well, if I'm gonna say like who deserves it, Seahorn, Megan, then Megan Fahey, Aubrey Plaza, and then Coolidge. Yeah, and then all the rest. I think that's like a quick in the moment yeah. uh, uh, ranking, but yeah, I agree. But, all right, I agree. That's uh, pretty spot on. All right, let's see here. We got two more, and normally we've been we've been going back and forth here, but I think lead actor is more interesting. To talk about, so I want to start with lead actress. All right. The nominees for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series are Sharon Horgan, Bad Sisters, Melanie Linsky, Yellow Jackets, Elizabeth Moss, The Handmaid's Tale, Bella Ramsey, The Last of Us, Carrie Russell, The Diplomat, and Sarah Snook, Succession. All right, Kyle. Tell me, where are we going? I think you alluded to it earlier. Yeah. I'm surprised so... if we don't have the same will win. Yeah, so my will win is going to be Sarah Snook, uh, basically for the reasons that I mentioned Matthew McFadden's character. Um, I think she, the the spotlight was really on her this um, this season, and I think uh, because of that, she's going to get the win. Um, just like last season was Jeremy Strong's, I think, biggest season. Mm -hmm. Um, I think this season was definitely about Sarah Snook and her relationship with Matthew McFadden and her father and and stuff like that. So, um, and she's great. She's a great actress. Uh, my Dark Horse, uh, very popular show. Uh, I, I want to say around the time when voting was happening. So I'm going to go with uh, Bella Ramsey from The Last of Us. So that is... Um, my will win and dark horse. I mean, maybe Elizabeth Moss has a chance for the handmaid's nah. tale as like a send off. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, but I, I think it's really between these two right here. I will say, I'll, I'll say it first. I'll give you the good news. I match. I have these two as my pick. All right. We have, we match here. I will correct you. That's the bad news, Kyle. You said it was around when voting happened. The Last of Us was actually about a year ago at this time. It was that long ago. Uh, January, February, March <laughs> of last year was when uh, these episodes aired for The Last of Us. You can believe oh it. Oh, my God. I just felt like it was so popular. Yeah. No, it definitely was popular. And that's the reason why I put her as my dark horse. Yeah. I, it's Sarah Snook. She's winning this award. I think it yeah. was a good call for her to go into lead this category, especially you know, we just talked about it with, with Jennifer Coolidge and just the White Lotus people. It's just like, get out of that. I think she would have been, you know, right up there with Coolidge. It would have probably been like a, a between mm -hmm. those two for the race. But it's I think this category was is so much easier for because if we look at the nominees, it's just like for me, Handmaid's Tale, that's dead and gone. That that yeah. thing, I'm surprised 
this is like the nomination it got, and it's just because oh she's won before, and, yeah, uh, Elizabeth Moss, blah blah blah. That's not yeah. winning. And then it's like I don't know. Let's see here. Uh, if Carrie Russell never won for the Americans, Americans she's not winning for the oh, diplomat. Man. Yeah, you know. And then Bad Sisters, never heard of it. Like yeah. it's just so it's like okay, well that leads uh, Melanie Linsky and Bella Ramsey and. Um, if Linsky didn't win for the much superior season one of Yellow Jackets, she's not winning for season two, which was much rougher. Like, it's just, you know, Linsky did have a good year. She was in an episode of The Last of Us. Maybe she has a better shot winning like the guest actress for mm. that role in The Last yeah. of Us than, than this category. Yeah. So that's why I went with Bella Ramsey. More is just like, why not? Because I think the will win is locked up for Sarah Snook. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I agree. All right. I'm going to be very curious about this next one, Kyle, because I think it's 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 between I'll just say I think it's between two brothers. And I want to know uh, where, where where we're going. So, Bard, read them off. The nominees for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series are Jeff Bridges, The Old Man, Brian Cox, Succession, Kieran Culkin, Succession, Bob Odenkirk, Better Call Saul, Pedro Pascal. The Last of Us and Jeremy Strong, Succession. All right, this is a strong category, man. Very strong category. It's tough. Um, especially I, I, again, it's it's gonna. Be, I'll just say it's 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 paining me to not have them as my will win or Dark Horse, but Bob Odenkirk, man, I think it's just it's the timing. I just think it's it's just again, if he wasn't able to win after, you know, after. For for last year, when when six A um, was being voted on and six B was airing that final season, all that critic love, everything that happened in the news with Bob and his story, if he didn't win, then again, it's been over a year. Like the strikes were happening, he wasn't able to get out there and promote. It's been so long since the show's watched. Meanwhile, what was airing in April and May? It was Succession. And it's just mm. like, it's just unfortunate that like the timing just didn't quite work out. And that's why I have it between, uh, I have it between the two brothers there, uh, Kieran Culkin and Jeremy Strong. And I will say if this is might be, I'll be, I'll, I'm curious where you're going, Kyle, but I'm going to say my will win. I think it's going to be Kieran Culkin and the dark horse is Jeremy Strong. Yeah. But I would be happy with either one. I, I know Jeremy won an Emmy before. For this role, mm. I just think this was kind of gearing it. Like, if we're gonna go, maybe like I want to say like most improved, but the like the biggest journey on the show from like for acting wise, you know, from the season one Roman that we got to season four, mm. I think he just he just got so much better as an as an actor, mm. and there was so much going on for 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 Roman this season. I mean the election episode and how evil he was for that. The funeral yeah. eulogy and that breakdown. Yeah. yeah was... There was so much for him to do this season. And there's always good stuff for Jeremy. And when he, he's, I love him as Kendall. And I feel like he's, well, he might be stronger overall. I think we take him for granted at some points and he becomes the joke, the dramaturgically, like it's, it, yeah. he becomes a meme and it's just, and it's unfortunate because he, Again, delivers such a great performance. No, he really gets into it, but like, great. I just think, I don't know. I just think that's where I'm going, and I'd be curious where you're going. Can we have a tie? Can we just say both of them getting at me? Like, <laughs> well, um, I think you're going to be a little bit surprised. Mm. Um, my will win is Karen Culkin. Okay, but my dark horse is Bob Odenkirk. Okay, I, I would be, I would so, be okay with that. I, I think it could be a send off. Maybe possibly he uh, he sneaks in there. The John Ham hey. Don Draper final season win. Yeah, could happen. I mean, maybe that's my only thinking, or maybe there's some kind of vote split happening or something, yeah. and he sneaks in. I don't know, but I could see. The, so that's why I have him as my dark horse. Could be a heart thing too. Yeah, I, I, I would love for him to win. It um, pains me he's not on my like. If I could do three, I would put those three. Let them all share a trophy. That'd be great. But yeah. Yeah. Um, but even like, I think somebody like Pedro Pascal doesn't, I, I wouldn't he had a year. be he surprised had a if he, if he won it, you know, Watch, it would, they're all going to cancel each other out and Jeff Bridges yeah. is going to win <laughs> <laughs> yeah. for the old man. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I think with like Brian Cox, I, I feel like probably I bet he just missed out on like qualifying for the guest acting yes, category. Yeah. Probably had like one too many episodes. And it's like, well, should he have gone supporting? It's like, well, I don't know. I think it's like damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. Like, it's just he's not winning either way. I don't think he would have yeah. won against Matthew McFadden in supporting. He's not going to win lead. So it's like it's a loose, loose situation. Yeah. Unfortunately, like he's great as Logan, but it's just like you got so many other good people too. It's I, just, know, uh, I know, I uh, know. All right, one more drama category to talk about here. It's going to be an easy one, I think, to predict. What do we got? The nominees for Outstanding Drama Series are Andor, Better Call Saul, The Crown, House of the Dragon, The Last of Us, Succession, The White Lotus, and Yellow Jackets. All right, Kyle, where are you going? So, um, my will win, because I think not only is it the, you know, the the best show this, this year, the past year, but I think it might be one of the, if not the best show of all time. Uh, and my will win is going to be Succession. And my dark horse is going to be The White Lotus. It seems to have gotten... A lot of love from everyone. I really like the White Lotus, um, but I just think it, it the, Succession is a behemoth right now. It's going to be pretty hard to beat it. Um, but the White Lotus does does have a great another great ensemble cast. Yeah. Uh, I just don't think it's as strong as Succession. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Those are my picks as well. I mean, Succession leads the pack with twenty seven nominations, fourteen major noms. I mean, their whole categories are. Like this show, I mean, it's between these two shows, but like it really is succession and it's leading at the Golden Globes this weekend. It's it's it's, you know, posed to win a bunch of there. Uh, it's you know, it's it's I think second with most nominations at the Critics Choice. It's just. There's that final season of it all, because sometimes it's like the final season, we got to really reward it for the final season. Yeah. And I feel like, oh, with like the White Lotus, it's like, yeah, we'll have other seasons of the White Lotus. Yeah. Like, yeah. In, we'll have more seasons of last of us and house of the dragon. And it's like, so there's that. So I think yeah. like, there's just so many things working in, in succession's favor. Um, it, it was, came out after the white Lotus as well. So again, fresher in people's minds. I just think it's successions to lose. It's going to be that show and it, it completely deserves to be uh, a succession. So I will say the thing I want to talk about here. You know, talking about final seasons, it kills me that Saul. I don't want to mm. even say it out loud, but I, I think it's happening. I don't. It kills me to say that Saul will never win an Emmy. Yeah, that's oh for fifty three. Like what? What the hell? Yeah. You don't understand. I, is it when, not like a... shows like I feel like Stranger Things and like you know whatever The Mandalorian can win awards for yeah whatever sound mixing stuff and you know the cinematography the the acting the the direction the writing it, it has everything yeah. what or is it missing <laughs> like, yeah yeah i I, th I, th I think it's taken for granted how, how good it is it's just like the expectation yeah. that it that it's good uh or my other thought is, is it as popular as as yeah. uh, Breaking Bad? I, I don't know. think so. I think it's it a very is different it. show and vibe. Because Breaking Bad, what happened with that, like, around season four, those seasons got on Netflix. So when season yeah. five, A and five B aired, that final season of Breaking Bad, each episode got bigger and bigger and bigger because yeah. people caught up on Netflix. They didn't really do that with Saul. And I don't know if it was yeah. just, like, the legalness of it all and not, like, the crazy drug you know, empire kind of thing that we saw yeah. with Walter White. It was a different type of show. It was more about character, I feel like, than plot. Yeah. Um, Better Call Saul. And um, Saul did get eight nominations for this cycle, but nothing for directing, nothing for cinematography, or even for, like, the star power of Carol Burnett, maybe some mm. guest acting from Aaron Paul or Brian Cranston, as, you know, their characters, nothing. And it's, it's, just, it's just really sad, you know, to go possibly empty handed after all these years, John, are you sad to see O for three 53 possibly? Yeah. I mean, uh, I kind of agree with what we've been saying. It's just like, how, how is this, which I know you guys think succession is, is the best TV. This is my best TV. Like how, 
How well, is this is my had... best TV of 2022? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because Succession was 2023. Yeah, you know what I mean. It, I, I, this this solid, in my opinion, is arguably better than Breaking Bad, and and I don't, I just don't see how it can it can pack so much in like like you said every category, uh, uh, writing and and the cinematography and the acting and all that. How it could be like at the top or the top of the, of every category and still not win anything. It's just, it's, it, I don't know. I don't know. Just give me one. Just give me one. <laughs> but, oh, oh man. All right. Let's move into our final category of the night. And that's comedy might be going a little long, but, uh, we'll, we'll do what we do here. Just like the Emmy awards. If we're going long, <laughs> but, uh, all right, Bard, what do we got? The nominees for Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series are Anthony Kerrigan, Barry, Phil Dunster, Ted Lasso, Brett Goldstein, Ted Lasso, James Marsden, Jury Duty, Eben Mosbachrick, The Bear, Tyler James Williams, Abbott Elementary, and Henry Winkler, Barry. All right, here. I'll just spoil what I'm going to kind of say for the rest of the night here. It's between two shows for me. Yeah. And it's between Ted Lasso and The Bear. And it's like, okay. where am I going? And again, this is really going to be the issue what we're going to be talking about tonight. It's like, you know, I got to get myself in the perspective of when Emmy voters were voting. It's like, you know, sure, we had the strikes and like, this is July and August, what was talking now, because there's so much talk now of the bear, like, you know, being on all the best year end lists and all that stuff. But And this is again for season two, even though we're doing, we're talking about season one for the Emmys. So I'm very confused. So if you ask me tomorrow, I would have probably changed these. But maybe I'm, this is what I'm going with right now. And maybe it's just because I like this show better. I'm going more into The Bear. And I want to give it to Will Win, Evan Moss, Bacharach, and Dark Horse, Brett Goldstein. With, I guess, a third place uh, thing for James Marsden, which I'll talk to in a little bit. <laughs> I just think this is like this, this is another tough one. You know, I think like if you asked me back in July, I was probably leaning... Oh, like probably more. It's going to be a Ted Lasso night than a bear night. But then I feel like it's gotten more like a 50 50. Maybe now I'm like a, like a 60 40 with the bear. Mm. Just being like, I just think from everything I heard about Ted Lasso, which I, I didn't watch this season, but I just heard it was a mixed final season, quote unquote final. We don't officially know, but it seems like it is the final season. And I just only heard positive stuff about the bear. And I think again, uh, Evan had a great season two, especially with the episode Forks, which was airing right around when voting was happening for these awards. I, j I just think I think that will help it. But again, I could be just wrong with it's like I'm in that mindset of all the year end lists happening right now versus back in Ju you know July and August when voting was happening. Maybe I'm getting confused between the two, but that's where I'm going. Kyle, where are you going? See, I've got a totally Ooh. this is wild to me. I've got a totally different outlook on on Emmy's night for this cat for for comedy in general. I thought to me it was going to be between The Bear and Abbott Elementary Ooh. all night and then maybe I can't tell with Ted Lasso what the vibe is with people because it seems to me from what I've seen it's very hit or miss yeah. in the reviews, but then it's still getting nominated for a bunch of awards. So I'm like, what it's, is it's the leading nominations on this for, show? for comedy? Yeah, and it's like the fourth most nominated show yeah. out of everything, you know, just two behind the White Lotus. So it's yeah. very confusing. Yeah. So I'm I, I'm not sure what the consensus is on Ted Lasso, I, I, I but. I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. But I, 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 at the time, I thought Abbott Elementary stock was rising when mm. voting was happening. So that was my thought process. But um, with that said, my will win is Evan Moss back, correct? Oh, uh, <laughs> after all that. <laughs> my will win is Evan Moss back, correct? But my dark horse is Tyler James Williams. And that's a good uh, choice. Yeah. Um, but I, I agree with everything you said about Evan Moss back rack. Uh the probably I'm guessing the the his tape was the one from you know his his 
prime sl- R. that was season two so that's even two. still so that's even like clouding my judgment yeah. see it's but very hard. i think that's but gonna I think cloud, gonna the, cloud judgment. the judgment of yeah. them too yeah so that exactly that was happening around when they were voting right yeah yeah i think, so I think that, the bear right came there. out in june voting was july and august like that's fresh in people's minds um that right there yeah I will say for Brett Goldstein, he won the last two. You know, he could go three for three here. It just really depends on what people are feeling with Ted Lasso. It at least got the most nominations going in to this, but did it kind of cool off quickly? Or will they re- reward it for possibly the final season? I just put James Marsden as like a third because I just, one, I just love jury duty. And he's mm. been getting some love. You know, Critics' yeah, Choice, Golden been. Globe noms. Like, it's pretty hard to do that when you're like playing like, a role like that's like a version of yourself like james marsden as james marsden so it's like it's very hard to get like nominated for that and for him to get nominations across all those voting bodies i think that's a like you know a fun you know good sign for him and i just think like you know i i think i could safely say and fortunately anthony kerrigan and harry winkler cross them out it's yeah. not them you can have the category of you know probably brett goldstein james marsden evan moss backrack and tyler james williams that's your category. It's between those four. Mm. Um, but all right. I think uh I think with this one, Phil Dunster even might have had a better season than Brett oh, really? Goldstein and Ted Lasso, though. Yeah, I think people just love Roy Kent. And I just yeah, think it's I like, think so too. They're gonna go with a character that they like love and yeah, you know. All right, let's talk about supporting actress. Mm-hmm. The nominees for outstanding supporting actress in a comedy series are Alex Borstein. The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, A.O. Aidbury, The Bear, Janelle James, Abbott Elementary, Cheryl Lee Ralph, Abbott Elementary, Juno Temple, Ted Lasso, Hannah Waddingham, Ted Lasso, and Jessica Williams, Shrinking. I think we're going to have one of the two, but after hearing your uh, points about the last category, I don't think we're going to have both be the same. Kyle, where are you going? Yeah, so I might be, I might be totally off here. Uh, because I saw on another list this person's name popped up, and I wouldn't be surprised. She had a great year. Yeah. Um, my will win is going to be Janelle James from Ava Elementary. Um, I think I know where you're going to go with that. Um, my dark horse is going to be, um, I don't want to butcher her name, but the girl from The Bear. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think she was great. I think she's even better in season two, which uh i think is gonna help her for this voting um but i think abbott elementary might win in this category but i think you might be going with the ted lasso person yeah so the one i have that we match with is your dark horse but my will win is ao from the bear but then my dark horse is someone from ted lasso and i'm going with hannah waddingham oh wow um yep that's exactly what i thought so it's like yeah, Hannah won back in 2021. Cheryl mm. Lee Ralph won last year. Mm. Um, I think, did you, hit, who's your will win? Was it Cheryl Lee Ralph or was it? No, it was Janelle, Janelle James. Janelle James. Yeah. So yeah, it's maybe possibly uh, spreading the love, uh, you know, between Abbott Elementary. But uh, I think AO just had a great year. I mean, mm-hmm. again, the Bear season two, and this is for season one, but you just look at her other work. She was everywhere. Theater camp, Bottoms. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. Yeah. That was just the movie side of things. She was also in an episode of of, uh, T- of Abbott Elementary, History of the World Part 2, I Think You Should Leave, Black Mirror, everywhere. She yeah, is she was everywhere. everywhere. Like, she had an incredible She's great. year. She's great. And I think, yeah, I think there's a lot of love for her and that character and that role, so I just think that's where I'm going uh, for the will win in that. But it's a tough one. I think it's really going to be a tough night. As much as like we were talking with like drama where it's like Succession versus The White Lotus. Which one? It's oh, it's definitely going to be Succession. This one, it's like it's the three. It's like all right, it could be Ted, it could be Bear, it could be Abbott. It could yeah spin a wheel. It could be one of them. It's very yeah. hard to pin this down. But let's talk about comedy actor. The nominees for outstanding lead actor in a comedy series are Bill Hader, Barry, Jason Siegel. Shrinking, Martin Short, Only Murders in the Building, Jason Sudeikis, Ted Lasso, and Jeremy Allen White, The Bear. All right, I think it's between two. And I'd be shocked if we are at least not matching one of them, Kyle. 
my will win. Jeremy Allen White. And my dark horse is Jason Sudeikis. How are we doing with that? Yep, that's exactly what I got too. Uh, I agree. I thought Jeremy Allen White was fantastic in the first season, man. Yeah. Um, he's so the he's the the face of the bear. He's the scene yep. stealer. It's just, I, I think it's like it's his show, and I yep. think people are going to reward him. I mean, I guess you could say the same thing about you know Ted Lasso and Jason. Like, yeah, Lasso is Jason. Like, they're the that's he's the face of that show. He is the character. Yeah, <laughs> but like, and and yeah, he's won the last two Emmys. But like, you know, Jeremy Allen White has been picking up the hardware. You know, got the Critics Choice and SAG. Uh, awards earlier this year Sudeikis wasn't eligible for them so this will be the first real showdown where they're both up for something at the same time so we'll see who you know comes out on top but I just think you know I think the bear is a bit fresher and newer we rewarded Jason before people like the bear more I think it's Jeremy Allen White what? yeah uh, I do too I agree his stock is rising like crazy so I don't see how he loses this. And the bear is very, very popular. So those um, those two reasons, I'm going with Jeremy Allen White. And if we look at the rest of the category real quick, it's just like, again, I, I mentioned it on our year-end special. I think Barry had a weak uh, final season. And unfortunately, you know, I don't think Bill Hader's in the running for this mm -hmm. anymore, even though he's won in the past uh, for this role and for the show. Martin Short, I think this was just like, you know, a nice nomination for, you know, a legend here. But uh, mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to be, you know, at the podium. Mm -hmm. And Jason Siegel, you know, I've heard good things about shrinking. Yeah, I just think good. it's it's just not the, yeah. the ones everyone talking about with Ted yeah. Lasso and the Bears. No. So, no. Yeah. But all right. Oh, you got two more tonight. We're going to uh, do the last acting a race over the night. And that is comedy actress. The nominees for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series are Christina Applegate, Dead to Me, Rachel Brosnahan, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Kinta Brunson, Abbott Elementary, Natasha Leone, Poker Face, and Jenna Ortega, Wednesday. All right, Kyle. This is a really odd category to very me. Odd. Yeah, very odd. Yeah, it's very hard to gauge what's happening here. But um, my will win is going to be Quinta Brunson from Abbott Elementary. Like I said, I think Abbott Elementary might have a big night. Uh, we'll see how it it goes. Uh, but I think they were. it was very popular. It's still very popular. People love the show. And I, I, I think it got a lot of nominations for ABC, right? So um, it's a very popular show. Uh, with that, you know, I looked at something like possibly – a Jenna Ortega from Wednesday. It was very popular when it came out. She's new. She's a kind of like a, a fresh face in the block. Maybe people gravitate towards her. Uh, so that would be my dark horse. I really had it up between two people. Uh, I was going to maybe do Rachel Brosnahan for the last season of the Marvelous Miss Maisel, possibly. They also love Natasha Leone. I don't know. And then I saw everybody is in love with Christina Applegate for Dead to Me, which I'm pretty sure that was their last season too, right? Yeah, it was. So there's a lot of last seasons. Yeah. There's some first seasons. Um, I think you are safe with your Quinta Brunson uh, yeah, will win. I think pick. so too. That is my will win as well. For the Dark Horse, it could be any of them. And I think it's for what you just said. It's a very odd category. There's a lot going on. It, it really could go any which way, but I think it's, Quinta has it locked for for Will win. So I just went with the dark horse of Christina Applegate just because of kind of I think what you've been seeing online the final mm -hmm. season, possibly her like, you know, Applegate's like on camera retirement after a public health battle. You know, I yeah. just think there's like a story there with that. Yeah, I just for sure, you know, it's just there's not many like precedent when it comes to stats for this category. It's really hard to I mean, Rosnahan won back in 2018 all the way for the pilot. Uh, of this but outside of that it, you know goes to different people and it doesn't really have a pattern the only thing i could really find was like they like rewarding like the name the face the producer yeah. of a show yeah bb waller bridge for fleabag julia louis dreyfus for veep um obviously there's a little bit there with natasha leone but like it, quinta bronson is the writer the the producer the star mm. of abbott so i think that helps and she won the golden globe earlier this year so 
I guess a full year because I guess the Golden Globes are this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it's so confusing, so confusing. But all right, one more to do tonight. Let's wrap it up. Comedy series. What do we got? The nominees for outstanding lead actor in a comedy series are Bill Hader, Barry, Jason Siegel, Shrinking, Martin Short, Only Murders in the Building, Jason Sudeikis. Nope, I grabbed the wrong one again. I'm sorry. Mm. Bard, I, uh... bard, bard. I actually need a second because I don't have the correct one open. Hang on a second. Well, it's all uh. good. It's all good. Uh oh. Uh oh. You know what? Uh oh. No, I, I think what we. I got it. I was gonna say, I think I could handle this one. I think I can not screw this one. <laughs> you up. got the names for this one. You want to do it? Or you want me to find it? Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll do it. I'll do my okay. best bard here. I'll, I'll I'll dub it in post. The nominees for comedy supporting actor. <laughs> I, don't even know. I already screwed it up. Comedy. I'm just gonna do it normal here. I'm gonna do it normal. Outstanding comedy series nominees are Abbott Elementary, Barry, The Bear, Jury Duty, The Marvelous Miss Maisel. Only Murders in the Building, Ted Lasso, and Wednesday. All right. All right. Here we go. I've been talking about it all night. These are my Will Wins and Dark Horse. I think it's between these two with Kyle's one that he's been talking about as like a third option in there. So my Will Win is the Bear, and my Dark Horse is Ted Lasso. Again, I think it could go either which way between those two because Ted Lasso is leading the nominations. The bear is the hot new thing. Uh, just the, the timing is going to be very confusing with voting and stuff. You know, do we reward the past big winner for the final season with Ted Lasso? Or yeah, do we go with the hot new show that had a great sophomore season during the voting of season one? And so it's like uh, the bear. It's, it's, it's very tough. It's very confusing. But Kyle, where are you going? Um, my will win is going to be the bear as well. I, I still don't know if this should be a comedy. It's, no, it's very, I, yeah, yeah. It's a very dark, dark comedy if we're doing that. But, um, I think the bear is a will win. And for me, my dark horse is Abbott elementary. So mm -hmm. that is my dark horse. No uh, love for I, Ted Lasso with you, Kyle. Yeah. It, I personally didn't love yeah. season three anyways. I thought it was fine. I, I honestly felt like I was just watching it just to complete it at points. Um, um, but I think Abbott Elementary is a star that's rising. People love it. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it wins. Um, so that is why I'm making it my dark horse. I, I really, I really, to me, it's like one in one A, the Bear and Abbott Elementary. I could, I could see them swapping out. Uh, yeah. Ted Lasso. I just, I. I'm going to call it here. Ted Lasso's in for a dud of a night. I'm calling it. I, I, I would be fine it. with that. I'm just, the only thing I was worried with, again, it, the timing is so confusing this year, but like Ted Lasso has like the fourth most overall nominations. Yeah. So it's just like, oh, like it got the nominations. People love it, but it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, will it be like sometimes like with the Oscars where you have like whatever, the Irishman, 11 nominations and get zero that night. It could happen. It could happen. It's just, mm -hmm. I just worry because sometimes it's like, it's the final season. We have to reward it. Yeah, we've that's liked true it so many too. times before. Yeah. So it's like that's where it's tough. I really that's think true. it's between those three that we've been talking about tonight. I love mm -hmm. jury duty. It's just it's just it's more fun than I think people like will seriously yeah. vote for it. Barry had a weak year, and again, that really is like, is that a comedy? I don't think so. Yeah. Um Marvelous and Maisel had a good final season, but again, I think it's time has passed. Only murders. I feel like it's not as buzzy as the first two seasons. And and Wednesday, that was like the fun nom, but I don't think it's gonna pick up the critics' love here. But yeah, so I yeah, I, I really think like if you look down to it, like you know, to sum up the night, it's for limited, it's the it's beef and Dom are going against each other with beef, you know, probably pulling ahead. Drama, it's succession, white lotus with succession definitely winning, and then mm. You know, comedy series, it's between those three. We talked about the Bear Ted Lasso and Abbott Elementary. Yeah. So I think that's the more the, that's the more like interesting one to watch on, on Monday night. Mm. The comedy one is where where that's going. And I think you might know early on in the night, depending on some of those acting awards yeah, where we're going. True. So all right, that's all we got. That's it for our uh Emmy prediction special, but that's not it for Emmy coverage. So we talked about our Emmy nomination reactions. That was all the way back in July. 
You can listen to that, you know, freshly the day after nominations came out, we talked about them. And then as we've been talking about tonight, in September, we had Bard uh, predict the Emmy Awards. Uh, so we kind of like got Bard's picks of who they think is going to win. Uh, so you can listen to those shows in our archives. And then, boy, do we have a lot coming up in January. We're going to be on Wednesdays this month on Twitch and on YouTube now. We're streaming on both. And next week, we're going to have a mini episode that's going to be available on social media where we share what we are looking forward to in 2024. All the movies, all the TV shows that are coming up that you should be on your radar. A little bit of a mini episode to get you just excited for what's coming out. And then the week after that, January 17th, we will recap the Emmy Awards, see what we you know, predicted, what we got right, what we got wrong, and also discuss the premiere of True Detective Night Country. Mm. And then finally, on January 24th, we will react to the Oscar nomination. So we're starting off with the Emmys. We got the Golden Globes in between. And then we're going to end with the Oscar nominations. It's a very busy month. So make sure you are subscribed and ready to go. We're on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the blog, DoerDynasty.com, Twitch, twitch.tv slash DoerDynasty. And we're on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and on TikTok at Dewar Dynasty. I got to thank both you guys for joining me tonight. Going a little long. Uh, make sure we get this in. Our, our first live show of 2024. And for John, for directing it. A lot of moving pieces. A lot of images. A lot of audio clips. A lot <laughs> going on. Streaming on both Twitch and YouTube. Really, uh, I couldn't do it without you guys. But yeah. Oh, wow. All right. That's all we got for tonight. Uh, I'm David Allen. I'm Tom Berwick. And I'm Kyle Berger. And that's all we got for Doer Dunsey's Emmy predictions. Goodbye, everybody.